This plot compares the composition of our sun to this of other stars in the vicinity of our sun. On the y-axis, there's the atomic ratio of magnesium over silicon, and the x-axis is actually not of importance here. The iron over H, also atomic ratio, is uh, called a metallicity. It, it's explained here how this works in detail, and it only is an indicator for the age of the star. But as said, this is not critical here for us. What is important is the magnesium silicon ratio of the stars. And uh, so the sun is quite in the center here with an atomic ratio of about 1.05. Now the weight percent, the mass ratio is not very different from this, of course. I come back to the other stars in a moment. I first want to explain what this magnesium silicon ratio means. Now, if you assume that in the beginning our solar system, part of it, or the protoplanetary disk, was completely evaporated and then started to condense, then the minerals we expect are primarily pyroxene because it has a magnesium silicon ratio of one, and also a little bit of olivine. And if some iron is added to these minerals, we would expect even more olivine. Now, when we look at meteorites, what we observe is that there is not only olivine. Pyroxene has a lot of it, of course, but there's also sometimes silica. Now, the silica is not expected. And uh, very often, chondrules, for example, are also mineralogically zones that have olivine in the core surrounded by pyroxene, and sometimes even a little bit of silica. As said, this is not expected from this ratio of magnesium silicon 1, but only if everything was an equilibrium condensation. So the interpretation here is that the condensation sequence was a fractionated condensation sequence. And because of this fractionation, silica can occur. Now what is interesting is that when astronomers observe other protoplanetary disks, they also observe silica. So they see silica grains in these protoplanetary disks. And there are two explanations for this silica. The first explanation would be what happened there is the same that happened in our protoplanetary disk, there was some fractional condensation. So this would be a very interesting result, because in this case, we would say, well, what happens in the protoplanetary disk in our um, is similar to other protoplanetary disks, so it was quite typical what happened there. So if you learn about our solar system, you also learn about others. Therefore, this would be important. But the ex other explanation could be that in another protoplanetary disk, there was just more silicon, and this produced then the silica. So to decide between these two possibilities, we need to know the composition of these other protoplanetary disks and these other stars. And this is what this plot here delivers. Because here we can see that the other stars actually have quite a similar composition as our Sun has. As said, this is a linear scale, so this range here is just a few percent variation or tens of percent variation here. It's not a lot. So most of the stars have the same composition as our solar system, some even more magnesium. So the, so which would mean even more pyroxene or olivine. Um, so the, the conclusion from this is that it is quite likely that in other protoplanetary disks, the silica that is observed is not because these systems have more silicon, but it is because there also um, some fraction condensation happened. So as I said, this is, this is quite an important conclusion. So then we can say it appears that we can use our solar system as um, a typical one to understand the formation of other planetary systems. Now there's one slight caveat, and this is um, that when we look at the protoplanetary disk from the, from the edge on from the side, so there's the star in the center, and then there's this protoplanetary disk, looks something like that. Um, so it goes round here, something like this. When we look at, or yeah, astronomers look at the protoplanetary disks, they look at the surface of it, which means that the silica they observe might be not in the center, so there's the midplane where planets, asteroids, and, and so on form. So this is the midplane here. So you might, the astronomers might not look at the midplane here, but at the surface, and if they observe the silica the surface, it's not clear what it really means for the entire composition, although it's said there's also convection going on, and this is becoming quite detailed now. It's, it's not about going into details here, it's just to um, show that there might be a caveat um, how to interpret 
the, the observed silica for the abundance of the entire system. But it's quite, as I said, likely that um, these other systems are, in fact, more uh, also th there was fraction condensation happening, and so our solar system is quite representative. And we can learn a lot from our solar system, not only about how it evolves, but also uh, how other solar systems evolve.